So this split ergo keyboard is made by Keychron, and this is a very popular, well-known by keyboard enthusiast company that creates lots of different types of mechanical keyboards. And this one is the Q11 knob version. Now, one of the key things about this keyboard that I'm really looking forward to having is a 75% mechanical keyboard layout. That's one of the things I struggled with with the smaller, more niche type of split keyboards. Even though I really appreciate the small form factor of 60% layouts for split keyboards, like my ultimate hacking keyboard, I do kind of miss having dedicated function roles and dedicated arrow keys. Sometimes I just do get layer fatigued. Another key feature of this keyboard that I really look forward to is the open source nature of it. Being able to use QMK, which is just a firmware that you can customize to your liking and do all sorts of different things. You're not restricted to a third party software, so you get the benefit of an open source community and hopefully you can customize this keyboard very easily without any programming and I'll show you a tutorial later in the video. All right, let's check out the cables first. Okay, we got a nice braided cable. Nice code quality. We have a USB-C to USB-A adapter. Now we have the connection piece, not too far apart. Unlike my Kinesis Freestyle Edge was, you can go up to like six feet or something, like something ridiculous. This is, but this is all that you need. I don't think you want a, a long split cable. Unfortunately, this is not wireless. I would love for them to make a wireless version of this, but not for now. So we got some screws for the screw and stabilizers, I suppose a key switch puller. We got some key caps, and I hope I think these are PBT key caps, the high quality ones. We'll find out shortly. Key cap removal, and then the actual keyboard itself. All right, moment of truth. Now this feels really heavy, feels very solid. It's made of like really robust. Wow, this is thing is a chonker. Really, really heavy duty. Okay, that feels really good. So right off the bat, you can see that there's these knob keys. You can press them down. They feel really good. I love the fact that I have directional keys on the bottom right corner. They are very easy to distinguish. They're not kind of blended in with other keys so that when you're typing and you want to quickly navigate to the arrow keys, you can just immediately feel it. You can feel that there's some asymmetry right there. And now I like this navigation cluster above it too, page up, page down, home, delete up here. You can rebind these to what you like the most. For example, I like to have the N key here, for example. This is all gonna be customizable, of course, in the software. So, so far this feels really good. Now, another thing that I really like about this keyboard immediately is that it has a relatively neutral profile. This means that there's no angle, there's no really big incline. It's like maybe about three degrees or something like that. It's very, very neutral. And that's really important if you want to maintain really good posture and ergonomics with your hands. For example, I see a lot of novice keyboard typists, they'll, they'll use the, I don't know why they include it, but they'll use the kickstand to extend it and provide a positive tilt. And that's really bad for you because what ends up happening, I'm going to exaggerate, is that when the keyboard is positive tilted, you're going to have a kink in your wrist like that. And for long periods of time, that's really going to affect your carpal tunnel syndrome, which are these like thin wires that go through your carpal into a tunnel. And that's gonna cause strain over time and cause really massive injury. So just be very mindful of that. And this is hot swappable. We can remove the keys. All right, so that was really easy to remove, thank goodness. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to remove it. And then you can replace this switch. So that's one of huge benefits is that this is a hot swappable keyboard. If you don't like the Gateron Browns or the Reds that come with it, you can swap it out with any other type of switch you want. And then we're gonna plop it back in. Very easy, it goes in very nicely. Another thing I have to say is that the Gateron Browns feel really lubed, very, very smooth. Like when I'm typing on them, they feel absolutely smooth. Like great job, factory lubed. Now these are brown switches, like I said, Gateron Brown. And I think that they, I think I'm gonna prefer this over the red switches. It's just very subtle. It's very different from my Cherry Amex Brown. Now I do have brown switches in my UHK Ultimate Hacking version two keyboard. Now the sound profile, they're very different. Very quiet and muted. This one is a lot more clicky clackier. So I didn't really end up liking the click clackety noise to it, especially on the space bars and, and the, the bigger keys basically. So what I ended up having to do is put these rubber kind of dampeners over here and that would kind of cushion when I press down and it would give it more of a softer feel. With the Keychron Q11, you don't have to do that because it already feels like really soft and I obviously I don't believe it has any type of dampener or softener. And you can see that this has the Gateron Brown, just like here, I also have Gateron Brown. They sound the same. This feels fantastic. The keycaps also feel really good. You gotta split it out, open up your chest, get that really nice ergonomic type of typing experience. Now in terms of the height, I think it's a tad bit lower. 
Now you can see that the difference of the 75% layout, it's quite a lot bigger, but not, not by much, to be honest. And the Keychron is a lot heavier. This one feels a lot more light, and this one is a lot heavier. And it doesn't have an enclosed casing. Perhaps that makes it a little bit easier to clean the keyboard. Now, one thing I do wanna note a difference between the two keyboards is that this one magnetically connects in so that it's a lot more sturdier in terms of having a single setup, non-split. Issues there. See, whereas this one here, it doesn't, it's not held by anything. But honestly, I think you don't need to spend the extra money and get all this extra engineering if you're just gonna have it in split mode. I just, I never really used that feature. I never felt like I had to. I guess when you're walking around transporting with this, it's a little bit easier. It's nice to put it back together so that it acts like a regular keyboard. Now, another thing that's I really like about these two keyboards is they have one, two, three, four before the space. So one, two, three, four before the space. And why that is so good is that when you do Alt-Tab, you can effectively move the Alt key towards the space. And because you do Alt-Tab so frequently, you can do the same thing with this keyboard here. You can go Alt-Tab really frequently. Not to mention you get these macro keys on the left side, which you don't get here. So if you want more keys, then this is definitely the keyboard that you wanna get. Now, another difference with other types of split keyboards like the Digma Rise, or the ultimate hacking keyboard or any other type of split keyboard is that they typically offer a tenting option. And that what that means is that you can tilt the keyboard in a degree so that the center becomes higher up and then you have this slant over here. And that's supposed to mimic the natural neutral wrist position of your hands. Now, personally, when I was using tenting on my other split mechanical keyboards, I did not like it at all. At first, I did like it. I thought it was a really nice relief, but funny story, it ended up causing serious pain over the long period of time. I don't know why that was the case. I'm just much better off suited flat like this and just typing normally. Having the split keyboard is already a huge bonus in terms of ergonomics, so I really don't miss the tenting, and it was actually a cause of a lot of pain. I had to go to physio. I didn't know what the problem was because I thought tenting was the key to preventing uh, repetitive strain injury, but that was not the case. It was actually causing it. And I've never actually had any issues using regular flat keyboards, even keyboards like, like that. I was typing on more of a slant. So that's one of the nice things about this split keyboard is that not only is it like flat like this, which is not very normal for your keyboard. It's nice to give a little bit of a slant like that. And then there you can type. Now in terms of the design, I have to say, I really like the colors. It's like a two tone color with some red accents over there. Um, I have to say this is a very nice looking keyboard. I like that the USB-C is over here so that it's very easily accessible. And the other keyboard, the Ultimate Hacking Keyboard, it was underneath and it was a little bit more precarious, kind of a scary place to put it. Now, I would have loved that this is wireless, but unfortunately that's not the case. Maybe in the future they'll make a wireless version. So yeah, let's plug this in. Let's load up the, their software. Let's configure it to the way I like it. And then I'm gonna do it like more of a typing experience, typing test, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So let's get right into that. So I'm gonna give you a tour of Keycon's Key Map Configurator software. Now, what I really like about their software is that it's very, very simple to use. And best of all, it, you don't have to download it. You just visit their website and then it can automatically connect, connect to your USB key, keyboard. And then from there, you can configure the key maps and all that stuff. So I love the fact that you don't have to download any proprietary software onto your hard drive, take up space, take up system resources and all that stuff. It's a really quick way just to connect through the browser onto their software and get started. So let's get right into it. And then just to give you a basic tour of all the software, first of all, we have our key map, and this is where you can assign keys. For example, I've binded escape here. So I just click on escape and maybe I want to change it to delete. Now what's really cool about this software is that you don't have to reflash your keyboard, which is a very tough step on some other keyboards where you have to recompile the firmware and then put it onto your keyboard through a, you know, clicking a bunch of random buttons, hardware buttons, and then flashing your USB that thankfully you don't have to do it. You don't even have to hit control S. It automatically saves to your keyboard as you make the changes. So the change there is already in effect. Now I really like escape on my caps lock key. So I'm gonna put it back to what it was before. So escape is at the top left corner. Let's tap that right there and it moves the cursor. You can see the orange highlight. It just goes to the next keyword. So you can quickly assign uh, keywords. So at the top over here, you have these things called layers. Right now I'm in the Mac layer zero, Mac layer one and then there's Windows. So obviously with this, you can quickly switch between Mac and Windows. And in my case, I just always have it fixed to Windows. I, don't, I never really have a specific Mac con configuration. So looking on the left side of the bar, you can see that we have lighting. From the here, we can change different colors. For example, we can do a cycle, we can increase the brightness. And I have to say the lighting, the RGB lights on this keyboard are absolutely fantastic. 
Now, unfortunately, the keycaps aren't translucent. You can't really see through them, but these are really bright lights. They, they are very visible because of the fact that you don't have an enclosed keyboard case. It's kind of like all exposed out like this. So it looks really, really good. And best of all, it doesn't have any coil whine, which has been a problem on other keyboards. Now, one note I wanna make about the RGB lighting is that you can't have per key RGB, which is not a big deal, honestly. You get all these cool different types of uh, effects and whatnot. You can change the speed, change the color. Now, moving down the list, we have macros, and it's really easy to record a macro. You have 16 slots, M0 to M15. So like, let's say I just choose M7. I'm gonna hit record and then just type my macro, and then I'm gonna say stop, and then just hit submit. Now, M7 is always bind it to macro, and then you can assign it to any of the keys over there. We also have firmware updates. This one is fully up to, up to date. We have a key test I've never really had to use, and then you can file a bug report. Now let's go into some of the more advanced keys. Now, before we do that, I just wanna show you on the key map all the possible configurations you can do. So here you have basic and you have your typical, you know, your function keys, all that stuff, delete home and all that stuff where you just wanna rebind things, arrow keys and whatnot. Now, if you're hunting for a specific key, just feel free to pause this video. So right now I'm gonna go through media. You can see that we can control our media. Here we have our macros that we can assign, like for example, M7. M7 was the one that we had previously created. And now we have special keys, things like mission control, clicky reset. Just pause the screen and just make sure you zoom in and try to check if you're missing anything that you need. One of my favorites is having function rows beyond F12, so F13 to F23 and F24. And then moving on, we have all our controls for light lighting. And now we have custom controls, so Siri, TAS, right option. And then we have our layers. Now layers are a little bit more advanced. If I Go over the question mark, you can see the different types of layers. And I personally love layers. The most common advanced type is MO. So that's moment, momentary layer, I believe. And you, you, all it does is that you assign it to a specific key, for example, the function one key, and that will momentarily enable the function one layer. So you can just tap that. So one of my favorite things that I like to do, for example, is I like to bind momentary layer number three. So MO3, which will bind to this. And then from there, I can bind enter and delete to E and D respectively. So that means I have a one hand operation on my left hand. And this is so essential for like video editing and whatnot, because I typically I have my right hand occupied by my mouse. So what I can do is I can use my control. And what's really nice about this is that the macro keys don't get in the way of the control key. Like you can really feel the control key. Anyways, I digress. What I, what I mean is that you can extend the pinky to the M5. And then from there you can hit E or D to, to like enter or delete respectively. Another thing I like to have on the left side of my keyboard, which is typically on the right side of the keyboard, is home and end. I love being able to quickly move the timeline in Premiere Pro, for example, to move the cursor all the way to the home or to the end of the timeline. So being able to have that full left-hand control is such an amazing thing. Not to mention that I also like to have the arrow keys closer towards the home row modifiers. In my case, I don't really like to have to move my hands all the way to the arrow key cluster, even though sometimes I like to do it for ergonomic reasons. What I can do instead is if I wanna quickly go to my arrow keys, I can hold, like I said, the M5 key, which is binded to momentary layer three. And then over here, you can see that I have my arrow keys binded over here. So this is kind of like my favorite setup. Now, unfortunately, you only have access to two layers per configuration. So either you're on Mac or Windows, you have basically four layers, but two for each. And another downside with this software is that I really wish they would provide more of the advanced QMK capabilities. Unfortunately, you'll have to use different software or you'll have to use the raw firmware and maybe get familiar with some C code in order to get things like home row modifiers, where if you you can basically hold down, let's say, for example, your A to enable shift or D for control or stuff like that. Stuff that I was really used to in my other keyboards, like my ZMK Kinesis Adventures 360, my Ultimate Hacking Keyboard, being able to adjust things like the tapping term and all those behaviors that are essential for home row modifiers and really good hold tap keys where you can tap a key once, like say spacebar, and then hold it to enable another layer. Unfortunately, it's not that customizable. They do have one type of special key where space function one. So what it does is that when you hold it, it'll activate layer one, which is the second layer. And if you tap it, it's a space. But unfortunately, when I when I was typing really fast, like, so let's say I was typing really fast on the keyboard and I hit space, it wouldn't register the space. It would trigger the layer by accident. So it's just not tuned to the way that I like it. So unfortunately, that's only one little downside, but this keyboard more than compensates for the lack of layers or the lack of customizability because if you're if you're kind of new to split ergo keyboards you basically just want to be able to remap all your keys and this software does not hold back on all the other advanced configuration 
Not to mention that you have two extra knob keys. You have these macro keys on the, on the left side, and then you have function rows, and then you have arrow keys. So you don't necessarily need access to all those layers because you have a bigger keyboard. You have more keys to play with, and it just becomes a simpler experience. Anyways, I hope that I gave you a good intro to the software. I have to say it is very simple to use. I love the UI. It's very slick. I like the dark theme and all that great stuff. Now, in terms of this keyboard, I have to say this is one of the most comfortable keyboards I ever typed on. The thing I like about this keyboard so much is the feel and the sound of it. It's just not annoying at all. It's not click clackety. It really has a nice kind of muted tap to it. The Gateron Brown switches are pro for the professional versions. They're factory lube to the max, so they feel buttery smooth. Now, in my typing test, I found that I was able to reach 100 words per minute, which on my other keyboards, for example, the Ultimate Hacking Keyboard, I was only reaching around 60 or 60 to 70 or 80 words per minute. I don't know why, but I type substantially faster on this keyboard. And I think it's in part due to how well it feels and how well the keycaps are. Now, I want to raise special attention to these special keycaps. They feel absolutely amazing. These are the best keycaps I've ever felt in my life for typing, maybe not for like gaming or whatever. For some reason, they just feel really smooth, unlike some other PBT keycaps that have like a gray surface. They feel utterly smooth. And the way that they kind of just perfectly make contact with your fingertips. There's something about that surface area that kind of like the bend, it just feels a lot more tactile. I don't know, my brain kind of recognizes it more and I, I can differentiate between different keys. So I actually make a lot less mistakes and I type way faster on this. It's just the sound, the dampening, what they've done here with the amazing aluminum anonized and aluminum kind of like a black. It, it just looks absolutely stunning, types so well and it really boosts your ergonomics. By having a split keyboard, you'll never want to go back to a normal keyboard. You'll never want to do this. It's just totally unsensible to do that. I definitely recommend checking this out. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.